Good evening to each of you tonight. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for joining us uh, online or by conference call if you are with us in that manner uh, tonight. But it is a joy to be able to gather together in one another's presence uh, and worship as the people of our God. Uh, our regular folks will notice my spectacles, my eyeglasses are missing this afternoon. I left those at home, so if I have to do that, uh, you'll know why. Uh, maybe it won't be like uh, one lady. I remember she came out the back and she said, I really enjoyed the service tonight. And I said, well, what was the difference? She said, I don't know. I didn't have my glasses or my hearing aids, but I enjoyed it a lot. So uh, maybe she didn't think I was much to look at or much to hear either. But uh, anyway, uh, hopefully that won't be the case with you tonight. Well, you see it on screen. It's vacation Bible school time. As it seemed like it's been over a year since we've had that, maybe closer to two. Well, for good reason, of course. Uh, this was the picture that I found maybe from last uh, time we had Vacation Bible School. There's a few familiar faces in there, maybe some that uh, might visit with us this week. I'm not sure, but so many good things about VBS that I love and that I enjoy, and I know you do as well. And We'll have activities even later on this evening about that. But what is VBS about? That's what I want to explore uh, with you this evening, kind of building on that theme that we talked about this morning about being the light. You know what kind of lights Noah put on the ark, don't you? It's on screen. He put on floodlights, right? And that's my attempted humor. Yeah, some of you will you'll think about that, and about the time you go to bed tonight, you'll say, hey, I get it. I got it. Well, Noah didn't put floodlights on the ark, but this week we will look at many of the things related uh, to the flood and look at uh, the wonderful story. It's more than just the theme of a decor for our children's nurseries or cute little clothes for our toddlers. Uh, there's much more to that episode than just that. Uh, the flood, the building of the ark, God's judgment on the world, the obedience of Noah, and so many other lessons kind of intersect and intermingle in that wonderful uh, account. And maybe you would say that word wonderful wouldn't even fit properly, but that'll be decided uh, throughout the week. Uh, tonight, let's take VBS, those three letters, and instead of Vacation Bible School, let me tell you what VBS is about. VBS is about visitors. And this is for our people, and I know some of you are visiting tonight. We're happy that you're here, uh, but we want you to understand how special this week is to us and how much we want to uh, make you feel at home and welcome you because you are a visitor. Uh, as you leave tonight, for our folks, pick up on the table as you exit one of these little cards. They're printed here on cardstock. Uh, what they are, these are all of the folks. There's 100 cards. I've got number 60, it looks like. 100 people, family units, sometimes individuals, moved into Cumberland County or changed addresses in the month of May. Isn't that astounding? Again, not everyone is a new mover. That is, they moved from somewhere outside of Cumberland County into our county. Some just bought a house, you know, in one part of town, moved to another part of town, or maybe from the country to the city, the city to the country. But there's 100 of these. We want you to pick one up. And what I want you to do is just put that little address in your phone or your GPS. And tomorrow, you can do it tonight on the way home if you want to do that. Just stop and knock on the door very kindly and say, I'm from the Crossville Church of Christ. Welcome to our area. We're having vacation Bible school this week. And if you've got children, we'd love for them to come and participate. If you don't, that's okay too. There'll be classes for all ages. Would you come and be with us sometime this week, Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock? We'd be glad to have you. Will you do that for us? Now, I've got Miss Shirley Barton. I can't go knock on her door because it's a P.O. box. I guess I could just stand by it and wait for her to show up. That'd be a little creepy, wouldn't it? But uh, nevertheless... I'll pick up maybe another one or so, but we'll send her a letter and invite her. And uh, if you know her by chance, then tell me and I'll give that to you. You might know where she lives or you can give me her physical address and I'd be happy to pay her a visit. But uh, do that. Tonight, let's think about visitors from this perspective. In Matthew 22, Jesus told one of his familiar parables uh, when he said the kingdom of heaven is like, that is, it's compared to this. A certain king arranged a marriage for his son. He sent out servants to call all those who were invited to the wedding, but they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. 
but they made light. Now this morning, if you were here, we talked in Matthew 5, 13, or Matthew 5, 14 to 16, our Christian light. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's not the way the word is used, of course, in this verse. They ignored it. They made light of it. They didn't consider it of any importance. And I know, like you, I'm often frustrated and saddened by the people that I try to show my love and more than that, the love of God to by encouraging them and inviting them and even offering them the opportunity to worship with us, to come to VBS or a gospel meeting or just to open and study the Bible with me and they make light of it. That's nothing new. Jesus said it's happened all through the ages. Now, this is about a king and a marriage supper or a marriage feast. But of course, there's a deeper spiritual parallel that we'll see in a moment. They made light of it. They ignored it. They went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. The king heard about it. He was furious. He sent out his army, destroyed those murderers, burned up their city. And he said to the servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. The wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? He was speechless. The king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, cast him into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now the point of this parable for our understanding tonight and application is not that we have the prerogative of the king. The king, who is our God, has extended the invitation. We, through him, extend that invitation likewise for people to come into his house, to partake of his feast, his spiritual feast, which is the teaching and preaching of his word. That's our task. Now, when people do that, just as Jesus noted, sometimes the, the wedding hall, God's house, may be filled with good and bad. Now, our task is not to do what the king did here, although that's tempting. We may tell people, you don't look right, or you're not acting right, or you're not understanding right. Please resist that temptation. Rather, what I'm encouraging you to do is that we have an opportunity to bring them to the feast. We have an opportunity to bring them to an opportunity to hear the Word of God. And I hope you'll do that. In John chapter 4, Jesus said it this way, lest, uh, as we often do, we try to find some rationale to excuse our duty, our responsibility. The Lord said, Do not say, There's still four months and then comes the harvest. No, behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are already white for harvest. There's always an opportunity for us to do the work of the Lord. And this week, although it's not the only week on the calendar that we can do it, this is a time when maybe perhaps still there is interest, there is intrigue, uh, there is uh, a, a yearning on the part of some maybe to explore. What is it that the Bible is about? What is it that... Uh, makes one a Christian? What is the church concerning and how does it impact my life? And Maybe especially for those who are younger. Maybe we can plant seeds. As Jesus said, the fields are white for harvest. That's true. That means bring them in. The time to act is now. But the time for us now is to prepare. And the time for us to do now is to act in a way that God's work is done. And maybe the seed that is sown in young hearts and minds what good will it do? Maybe none that we'll see at the conclusion of the week. Maybe nothing observable that we'll be able to point to. But what a difference it might make years down the road, decades even. We want to be about the Lord's business. What is VBS about? VBS is about visitors. We need to be aware of that as the people of God, especially in this place. Letter B, what is VBS about? It's about the Bible. Vacation Bible school. And we make no apologies in this place for following and obeying the Word of God. And that's not always easy. That's not always popular. It's not even always pleasant. Now, I know some people say, well, you shouldn't say that. It should always be pleasant to serve God. It is pleasant to serve God. It is right. But sometimes it requires sacrifice. Jesus said, if you're going to be His follower, deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow Him. That's not easy. 
And even uh, as we think about the challenges that we have faced sometimes to our own behavior and actions, our own uh, failures to live faithful to the Lord, we realize ourselves our failure in that regard. But tonight, even though you know these verses, listen to them again. Paul said, all Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 beginning, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. He breathed it out. It is profitable, beneficial, useful, able to accomplish and be the guide for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. So that the man of God, there generically the people of God, so that we could be complete. That is, equipped in a complete fashion to do every good work that God would have us to do. We make no apologies for the truth of God's Word. We make no apologies for presenting it to people in truth. If it is the case, and certainly I would welcome your feedback uh, at any time, that what is presented uh, from this place, uh, at least as it regards my part in doing so, if it is not presented in a loving way, then please tell me. If it is truth, then it will, try, it will be my attempt to try to present it as lovingly as possible, but still present it truthfully nonetheless. And we live in a time, unfortunately, where people equate uh, love with acceptance, with affirmation and validation. That is, uh, just tell me what I want to hear if you love me. Accept what I've already made up my mind to do if you love me. Don't correct me at any point. It's interesting, even though we apply such a false standard to religion, we don't in other aspects of life. None of us go to our medical doctor and tell that health uh, care professional, you love me, so no matter what I've got going on that's wrong, if it's going to be something that causes me pain, if you're going to have to you know, take out uh, surgically a tumor, or if I'm going to have to alter my diet, or if there's some other discomforting, uh, unenjoyable thing that you think I need to do to have greater health, don't tell me because, after all, you love me, so you want me to just be happy, and I'm happy right now, so just leave me as I am. Uh, that doctor would quickly dismiss the case. Uh, they would say, I can't help you as a person. I can't help you unless you're willing to do what is necessary to regain your health. Spiritually, we're telling people the same thing. Here's how Jesus said it in John 12, 48. Again, most know it without turning there. Jesus said, if you reject me, and notice that's an option, sadly. God does not force us. He does not uh, make us, as it were, obey Him. But we can reject Him. But if we reject Him, Jesus says, and do not receive His words, we have one. We have that which judges us. Well, what is it, Lord? The Word. The Word that I have spoken, the same will judge him or her in the last day. That's the fact of the matter. If you want a picture of that, turn to the last book in the Bible. Look in chapter 20 in the book of Revelation. All stand before God, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, Races, nationalities, economic or educations, uh, educational attainments, none of that matters on that day. All stand before God. And as they stand before Him, the books of His Word were open. And compared or laid side by side with His Word is the book of life. And it will be the Father's uh, decision there to look for my name and for yours and to see if it is found therein. It is He who writes those names in. It is He who erases it. But it is my actions that determine whether my name is found in that book of life or not. Just as it is your responsibility to make sure your name is written there. Vacation Bible School is about visitors, but it's about the Bible. It's about us telling people that this is truth. This is what God has spoken. And this is what God has assured us will judge us. People used to understand that, I think, maybe better than they do now. And they would even uh, sometimes say, well, I, I know I'm not right. I know the Word of God's right. I know the Bible's right, but I'm going to choose to do wrong. And they have that prerogative today. People want to cast doubt and say, well, the Bible's not right. Or maybe it is wrong. No, we're here to say, and we're here to say it uh, again with full conviction, it is true. It is right. And it is what Vacation Bible School is all about. Finally, Vacation Bible School is about cookies. No, it's not about cookies. It's about other things other than cookies. It's about serving. And when I think of Vacation Bible School, maybe cookies and Kool-Aid kind of top the list. But it's about so many other things that we want your help in. And we want you to participate with us in that regard. You remember in Matthew chapter 10, the statement that Jesus makes 
It's a statement that has been abused. Uh, I've seen it abused in a number of different settings. Uh, I enjoy as just a recreational activity, uh, running as a sport. I know some people would say that must mean you don't have anything between your ears, and maybe that's partly true too. But uh, I remember running a few races uh, through the years, and uh, there would be someone who would be uh, sitting on the side of the road, and they'd have a little poster, and they'd have Matthew tw- uh, 10, 42. Uh, there is the scripture reference and cups of water. Well, why would they do that? Because Jesus said, anyone or whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Now to Jesus, is what he's teaching, is he saying, you hand out a cup of water as that guy runs by in a race and you're going to go to heaven? Oh, clearly there's more to it than that. If that were all that it took, um, heaven would have a far greater population, I suppose. But in context, of course, he's talking about our service to him. And the point he's making, and making it so very in a picturesque way, is this. The little things aren't just little in the sight of God. Uh, As we sometimes sing, little as much if God is in it. That is, if done in God's name for His glory, for His purposes, according to His will, it can accomplish great things. What can you do to serve this week? Well, uh, Larry will tell you when we get done, uh, if you don't know what to do, we can find you something to do. Many of you have already signed up to do that. It may be a job that's very, you would consider uh, just very trivial, maybe inconsequential, uh, maybe of little value in comparison to what others might be able to do, but thank you for doing it. And do it, and do it very, very well. Why do I say that? Because the Hebrew writer reminds us of something that we tend to forget. And it's maybe because we are uh, so aware of our own shortcomings that we think that Uh, we are inconsequential. Uh, That it's not really of any value to do that which we maybe have been asked to do. And still to counterbalance that or maybe to uh, contradict it altogether, listen to what the Hebrew writer says. He said, God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward His names in that you have ministered. That word there is our word for serve. You have ministered to the saints and do minister or do serve. Now of interest, there is nothing in this passage that indicates what exactly it was that they did. There's no mention of cookies at VBS, but I think it would come under this umbrella. Uh, There's nothing about uh, just greeting those visitors that we talked about earlier, but it would fall under uh, this category. Uh, there's nothing about all of the things that we can do to work together and should be doing to work together to minister, to serve. You can serve, and that S in VBS should remind you of that. Uh, having been a few other places, uh, I have been amazed sometimes at those things that are done that no one notices until that person that did them can no longer do them. I've known some sweet Some of our, what I'm calling you with all due respect, some of you senior saints. Uh, What what do you mean senior saints? High school senior saints? No, I'm talking about our senior citizen saints in the kingdom of heaven. The things that you do, that maybe some of those of us who are younger and moving at a much faster pace overlook and ignore or don't take notice of. And then when those senior saints graduate to glory, as it were, and the next VBS comes along, and something doesn't get done, I've asked more than once, hey, why, why didn't that get done? Well, that's what brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so, you know, those proverbial brothers and sisters, that's what they did. And we, we didn't know it. We didn't recognize it. What are you doing to serve? I might not know. Others may not see. But the Bible says God is not unjust to forget. It's the right thing with God to remember. It's the right thing with God to notice that the things that are done in His service, He takes account of. Now again, this isn't some sort of motivation, again, just so that we can pat ourselves on the back, but it's just a simple reminder. Even though others may overlook, even though others may not see, God does. And He will remember. He will remember that labor of love. That's the motivation for why I do, how I do what I do. 
in that I have shown toward His name. You see, in serving, you may be serving our young people, you may be serving our visitors, you may be serving uh, for a variety of means or purposes or, uh, you know, with the background uh, of just maybe wanting praise. But if it comes from a true heart devoted to loving His name, God takes notice. And He'll always see that service that you've rendered in His name. What's VBS about tonight? Well, VBS is about our visitors. It's about the Bible. And it's about serving. Simple, yes. Uh, but this week, if maybe no other week throughout the year, helps us kind of reorient on that focus and that mission that we have. And I'm praying and ask you to likewise pray and beg God's blessing to help us to have a wonderful week. And with His blessing, I have no doubts that He will. As we do at the close of each lesson, again tonight, I urge you to consider urge you to seriously evaluate the very condition of your soul and your standing before God. The plan that God has outlined in His Word, the New Testament, for us to be saved is straightforward and it is simple. I know there's a lot of writing on this slide and maybe I'll try to simplify it like I have some of the others, but you see there in the bold red letters, we hear the gospel and if we are to be saved, we have to obey it. That requires us to believe it requires of us that we repent and change our attitude towards sin. We confess our faith in the Savior, Christ Jesus, our Lord. We're buried with Him in baptism. And that uh, plan, that uh, wonderful step-by-step uh, -step process uh, is what we see all throughout the New Testament. Those who heard the gospel, that's what they did. And tonight you can do the same. And you can leave with a great, great joy in your heart knowing you've been forgiven you've become a Christian, a child of God. Tonight we also urge uh, those who are the people of God to consider how you stand before Him. And I want to tell you tonight that uh, after the singing of this song, Brother Larry will lead us in a prayer because there is one of our brothers that has requested our prayers. Brother Frank and I uh, met this afternoon uh, in my office with Brother Tom Dotson. You know, if you're one of our folks that we've been praying for Tom over the last several weeks, the elders requested that we pray for him, and uh, I've met with him twice, and this afternoon uh, he wanted uh, to make all of you aware and certainly even uh, petition God for his forgiveness. He received um, in the last few months some health diagnosis information that is not very promising, just to be honest, and he was discouraged by that, and by his own admission he said, I was mad at God. I walked away. And uh, he does have great trouble, uh, breathing troubles. Uh, of course, that's uh, something to be very concerned with, with the COVID virus, which he suffered from, uh, and the ramifications even that linger from that. He's got some other issues, but uh, here's what he said that really impacted me. He said, all of the love that I was shown, the cards and the notes that so many of you sent, he said they meant so much. And I knew I was loved, and I've never had people express that kind of love to me before. He asked for forgiveness from all of us as his Christian family. He asked for God's forgiveness, and we uh, prayed for him then, and we'll pray for him in uh, just a little while, and also pray for his strength and what sentiment we were left with and what we kind of uh, both agreed on is this. We've got to help each other. And that's what God wants us to do. Uh, this week is just kind of a, a way to see that in action in a very vivid form with the young and old alike. We have to help each other. God is our great helper, no doubt about it. And He is the one that can supply the true help that we need above what any human can do. But we as God's people, we have to help each other. And for those who are not God's people, we're trying to help them to know Him as well. So Brother Tom wants you to know that. As I said, Brother Larry will pray for him in a moment. But maybe you're here tonight. You're one of those who needs to do what he has done. Maybe you need to say, I, I need help too. I need forgiveness also. Uh, I need to be again among the faithful people of God. We'll help you just as we've helped him. We'll love each other as God has loved us. We'll enjoy his favor by being obedient to his word. Tonight, if that is your need, won't you come even now as we stand and sing together.